I told my old man to go get his gun and I'd blow my own head off right in front of him. I'd been in his closet millions of times and knew exactly where he kept it along with the shitty dope he was trying to peddle. This was a day I had really been anticipating. I was a late bloomer on my family's rejection calendar. No one had lasted past the age of 15. And here I was, 17 and on my last free meal. I could attribute the debasing of my life to my wicked stepmother or to the big shot Miami Mafia friends my dad had started running with. But, to be honest, I myself was no angel. <laughs> I forget now exactly what the fight was over, but I think it was about the money my dad was saving for me. He says to me, what money? Have you ever heard that? From someone who's got your money, they say, what money? I waited till he split that night and I grabbed $120 and a half an ounce of some real terrible Jamaican shade from his closet. My plans were already in gear. <laughs> Two weeks earlier, my buddy, the UGG, had headed out to California to play football for San Ysidro College. At the time, I was a real heavy surfer at, and Cal was a dream team. I told him not to be surprised if I showed up one day. I looked up San Jacinto on the map, and it was only three quarters of an inch from the beach, so I figured that's where I'm headed. Down at the Greyhound station, tickets were $95, and that only left me with $25 and a half an ounce. It was too late to go back home. My dad must have discovered he's gone by now, along with his money. And the shake. So I paid the man and stepped on the bus. There was something about the sound of the doors closing, and I listened to the engine revving up and started crying uncontrollably. I looked out to my good friend Yanover who drove me down there. He was smiling, real nervous, couldn't believe I was going to do it. As the bus pulled past him, I ducked so he wouldn't see me. I felt less ashamed crying in front of all the strangers around me. I had the feeling they all silently understood. The first fuel stop we made brought on new passengers. Amongst them was a frail girl about my age with wavy chestnut hair. She headed towards the back of the bus. As she came up to me, our eyes locked. She blinked once, real wide, and then plopped down right next to me. Her name was Lucy. She was only going as far as Louisiana, but for two days, Lucy and I were lovers. We even had a fight once because she said I wasn't paying her enough attention. When her stop finally came, she scribbled down her address on a piece of Newsweek and kissed me goodbye. The same sick feeling rose up in me. I clutched the piece of Newsweek as if she were still there and ended up losing it the next day. Riverside is what the man told me. That's the closest station to San Ysidro. Riverside. I dragged my surfboard, my art supplies, and my duffel bag off the bus and camped out around one of those plastic chairs. On my right was a disheveled young couple waiting for their friend. On my left was this little man. I asked him what he was doing there. He told me, I just like to hang around bus stations. See the people. I asked if there was a hotel nearby. He said, no, none. The station closes at 11 o'clock and the cops come by and sweep up all the vagrants. It was then 8.30. I called the UGG and I got through to his roommate. Please tell UGG I'm at the Greyhound station in Riverside. I started feeling sick. The little man told me he lived just down the street with his brother and he was sure he wouldn't mind if I crashed there. All this time, the couple on my right listened in to our conversation. When the man got up to make a call to his brother, the, the guy nudges me and says, Hey, look, kid, this guy is kind of funny. 
don't know where you gotta go, but I'll take you there myself. Oh, I said, that would be great. I was so ingratiated to him. He had this big tattoo of a knife stabbing into a heart with blood dripping on his forearm. Great tattoo, I said. Yeah, had to put it there. Covers my tracks. Cops keep hassling me for my tracks. It was 10.30, and their friend had finally arrived, and they told me to go load up my stuff in the alleyway and back. If they were planning to roll me, all they were going to get was $10 and a quarter of an ounce of shake. I began to get the sensation of diving into ice water. I was ignoring my better judgment. For the first time in my life, I felt truly out of luck. But I was wrong. The alley door swung open, and through it came the Ugg and two big guys, who were obviously jocks. When I saw him, I went screaming up to him, I jumped into his arms, and I started kissing him. His friends were kind of distant to me. But by the end of our car ride back to San Jacinto, we had smoked them out with the rest of my shake. Ugg gave me a place to stay. Ugg, whose real name is Jimmy, was one of my closest surf buddies. His mom was kind of famous for having gone out with Murph the surf. She told us stories about how she and Murph would go into the hotels on the strip, posing as movers, and bring home all kinds of unreal furniture. Ugg would point to a lamp and say, See that? It's from the Deauville. Where we were staying in San Jacinto was actually about three hours from the beach, but I was glad to be staying anywhere with someone I knew. The unfortunate part is that we were living with four football players in a one-bedroom apartment. There was this guy named Cozy, and he was also studying to be a gospel preacher, and he'd hang out in the shower screaming out the Bible. And there was another guy whose name was Joe, and he had a real bad attitude, probably because he was the shortest guy on the team, and he was also on the third string. He called himself the Italian Stallion. He was the kind of guy who had no future, but remained on the team due to his hustle. Anyway, with all those guys around, my food started disappearing, especially my string cheese. Some fucker liked it as much as I did and just kept eating it. Now, I don't eat a lot, but when I do, my food had better be there waiting. So I had to figure out a plan to keep those vultures away from my food. After two weeks of frustration, I had a desperate idea. I went shopping, I bought all my favorite foods, including my string cheese, I put everything away in my little corner in the refrigerator, just like always, and I cracked open a string cheese, I ate a half, then I went into the bathroom, and I jerked off on the other half. I placed it back in the wrapper, and then I put it back in the refrigerator. I gave it one day. The very next day, everyone was at home. I went to the refrigerator and I checked on my cheese. It was gone. I sat back down on the sofa and I waited for my chance to speak. When there was a break in the insults, I said, uh, Hey, you want to know what I did? Well, see, some fucker kept eating my string cheese, so I went to the bathroom and jerked off all over it, and then I put it back in the refrigerator, and sure enough, someone ate it. And of course, everyone denied it. I think it was Joe because he was really indignant to me after that. I could tell he wanted to kick my ass, but he said he couldn't because that would be admitting to him. From that day on, no one ever ate my food again.